So thank you, Dr. Craig Wynn. It's so nice to have you join us for our session today. So this is about COVID living single and alone. Just a quick introduction about Dr. Craig Wynn. He is an associate professor of English in the Division of Arts and Humanities in the College of Arts and Sciences at the University of the District of Columbia. His research includes composition pedagogy, writing and psychology, single studies, critical discourse analysis and rhetoric and popular culture. He has presented at a variety of conferences on these subject areas and his work has been published in Teaching English in the Two-Year College, Journal of Creativity and Mental Health, Journal of American Culture, Spark, a 4C4 Equality Journal, and Revista Feminismos. He recently published a book, How to Be a Happy B Bachelor, which was inspired by his themed composition courses on singlehood and marriage. He is currently working on an edited collection of essays on emotion as it pertains to writing, a critical discourse analysis on familial images and pharmaceutical advertisements, and a book of microfiction pieces. So with that, Craig, I will be on hand to help facilitate any questions, and thank you very much. All right, thank you, Professor, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, to come out to uh, hear this presentation. I know uh, we're uh, actually we're just past midterm, so I know uh, this is a very uh, very busy time for all of us. Uh, so um, so uh, I'm not very big into the whole unidirectional uh, approach of giving presentations. I like for my uh, my audience to be engaged. And uh, I take the same approach to my classroom instruction uh, as well. So let me share my screen with you. Okay, there we go. Okay, can everybody see the, uh, see the PowerPoint? All right, excellent, excellent. All right, so like I do with my classes, uh, I always like to start out my presentations with a free writing exercise. And what, I, what I'm gonna do is, I'm sorry, let me just put this link into the, uh, into the Padlet, into the uh, chat for you. Uh, just give me one, I'm sorry, just bear with me for a second. So uh, what I'd like for us to do, I'm gonna put a, a link into the, into the Padlet uh, for us. And what I'd like for you to do is uh, just uh, on, uh, let me just share my screen with you again, is describe your experiences. And uh, I know that, uh, and I don't know uh, what I think I, I actually, I think I know what uh, Dr. Krauthammer's situation is, but I'm not sure about uh, the rest of you, but describe your experiences. If this applies to you living alone during the pandemic, has it been liberating, lonely, some combination of both? Have you adopted a, any new routines during the pandemic that's been going on for the past uh, for the past 19 months. And uh, if you're not living alone, uh, if that's not your experience at the moment, what is your experience living with another person, whether it's uh, a spouse, uh, children, a family member, roommate, uh, what have you? And what are some things that you think of when you think of an adult who lives alone? So what I'd like for you to do is to just take about five minutes just to get what you can into a physical form and uh, just uh, post on the, uh, on the Padlet and uh, then uh, we'll discuss. Excuse me. Um, Dr. Wynn, we, we're having trouble opening up the Padlet. Oh, uh, let me, I can put it, did, I can put it in the chat again if, uh, if it's having uh, issues. All right, sorry. Participants. All right, let me try this again. Okay, is it opening now? No. All right, it's still opening. All right, you know what? And that, if, that, if that's the case, my apologies. Don't worry about the uh, about the Padlet. Uh, just uh, just go ahead and just put it into a physical form, whether it's on uh, whether it's on paper or on your uh, or on your computer, and uh, we'll share in about five minutes. Does that sound good to everybody? All right, excellent. Sorry about the. Uh, inconvenience. Dr. Wing, can you put back the questions because I kind of forgot it on the screen? Thank you.
So Dr. Wynn, we're just typing this in the chat box, correct? Okay. Ah, uh, sorry, let me unmute. Uh, yes, so you can put it into the chat box if you want. If you if you don't want to put it in the chat box, you can just write on a sheet of paper or uh, on your computer or uh, even on the phone on your phone if you're uh, if you're using that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, I see we have a few people uh, who are just uh, coming in. What we're doing right now is just a, a free ride, just about your experiences either living alone during the pandemic, or if you're not living alone, what is your experience living with another person? And uh, what do you think of when you think of another person, of uh, someone who, of an adult uh, who lives alone? We've got a minute left in the exercise, in the uh, exercise just uh, keeping in that time. Okay, so that'll conclude the, uh, the writing portion. If you're still writing, I definitely do not want to interrupt anybody's flow. So if you're still writing and if you're really on a good uh, on a good track, just uh, please do keep going. But uh, I saw a few of you uh, wrote in wrote in the chat, so I'd like just to give a few minutes for people to uh, to speak into the microphone if you're uh, if you're so inclined. So it seems that uh, we have two people who uh, who do live alone and two people who have uh, actually no never mind uh, professor uh professor wong did i pronounce that right professor wong okay so uh okay so uh, professor uh Professor Wong, uh, Dr. Brown, and uh, and uh, Julian uh, King. So uh, you he wrote a little bit about living alone. And uh, David Cern and uh, Len, uh, Dr. Krauthammer, you, or Krauthammer rather, you he wrote about uh, living with uh, with other people. So we have a nice uh, variety of experiences. So what I'd like uh, is uh, just for somebody first who lives alone, just to talk a little bit more to elaborate on uh, on what you wrote. So, uh, so what are some ways that you've uh, been able to uh, to either reflect on uh, just your own practices or to 
or to, to pursue things you enjoy uh, or to uh, or to develop or to develop just uh, develop your own routine. So somebody who lives alone, uh, would you like to uh, share that? Okay. All right. I guess uh, I guess we're in the kind of a little bit of a lunchtime lull uh, as far as that goes. So, so that in that case, I'll give it a chance. I'll give uh, Dr. David Cerner, uh, Helene, uh, or uh, Dr. Krauthammer a chance to speak. So, uh, so as far as that uh, as far as that goes, uh, would one of you like to share uh, just to develop on uh, just what you uh, what you said about uh, new routines and uh, and also when you think of an adult who lives alone, uh, what uh, what thoughts come to mind? Oh, I'm sorry. I did not see the hand up. Uh, I did not see your hand up, Fatma. Sorry, I just didn't have the uh, participants. So, uh, Fatma, would you like to uh, share with us? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, because nobody shared as a living alone. So, I don't live alone, but it's kind of partially alone sometimes. Uh, and it's interesting because, uh, 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 you know, my family is living between two houses. So, I have the weekdays living on my own for three or four days. And my husband like come really like seven or six o'clock and mostly that through the pandemic. So I have the whole morning and the whole afternoon living completely alone rather than when we were in the office, we were communicate with our uh, colleague and meet for lunch. And that was a bit struggle in my opinion. And I missed that. And I, in order to cope with it, I would sometimes either I will uh, enjoy my colleague uh, in the, during the team or uh, zoom will have like a fun talk and get out of that work uh, kind of meeting and sometimes i will go only for a walk and have my music on so it kind of established kind of routine between me and my colleague at udc that we can have a meeting outside of the of our regular office uh, uh, but um i thought of people who are living alone at least i will live partially of the day alone and then my husband will come in the afternoon so i will have somebody to talk to uh, so i really have deep uh thought for who people lives completely alone and that probably was hard um and um, um, uh, connect with them. Whenever I feel somebody who's uh, lonely, I will just uh, meet with them in the morning <laughs> because I'm alone too. Okay, so it's, it sounds like uh, you're actually, ex you're experiencing uh, a variety, you have a variety of experiences uh, happening. So so it sounds like you're finding, to, at least uh, during those times that you're alone, it sounds like uh, you're uh, you find those times to be a little bit more challenging than uh, you know than when your spouse is uh, is around yeah and it's, it's not only my spouse I miss people I'm a people person so having not people around me that was a big big challenge and when the kids are here just uh, all kids kids and the spouse so it's just not my uh professionals or my friends I just didn't we couldn't have that Okay. Okay. And all right. So, and it sounds like, uh, and I'm uh, just uh, reading the uh, the chat. It sounds like uh, doc, like uh, Dr. Wong and uh, Dr. Sneed uh, seem to be in uh, sort of a similar uh, similar place. That uh, you know, that not being able to interact with people can uh, be very uh, you know can be very challenging as far as uh, as far as that goes. So, uh, and uh, so, uh, David, I see you have your hand up uh, as well. Uh, what did you do? What did you want to add? I mean, I don't live alone, but I wanted to speak on one of my best friends living alone during COVID. He had a very rough time. Uh, so I know that he has two cats that helped him uh, having some pets around. He also took up some hobbies, including gardening. So I know that when he shifted his focus away from the media coverage of the pandemic onto more of things that he can enjoy at home, that helped him tremendously. Okay, so being able to uh, kind of shift your perspective, so your friend was able to kind of shift his perspective. Uh, Definitely. 
the, as, as far as that as far as that goes. So, mm-hmm. so what I and uh, I because this is uh, a uh, kind of a pra- more practical presentation. Uh, I don't want to uh, go too much into a history or theory, but there are uh, some terms that I do uh, that I do think it's very helpful for you to know if you uh, haven't uh, heard them uh, already. Dr. Krauthammer, you've I'm sh- I've probably told you about these uh, before, <laughs> just in uh, presentations that uh, we've been in. But uh, so there are terms singleism matrimania and amato normativity and uh, I'm not sure if this uh, necessarily uh, applies to any of you but I find that uh, it can become internalized and uh, what singleism is it was a term coined by a psychologist named Bella DePaulo uh, in her book uh, in her uh, article, uh, Singles in Society and Science, which came out in uh, 2005. And uh, what that essentially is, is uh, the stigma that society has against those who aren't married or partnered in some way. And, and this can be, uh, a, very, this, a lot of this can be very subjective, but uh, it, can, uh, it can range from uh, policies that, uh, that benefit the married. Like for example, uh, married couples can, uh, can share in tax breaks. Uh, for example, there are uh, discounted rates for married couples to uh, kind of microaggressions that uh, some singles might face, uh, like at a family gathering, for example, or like when, like if they're at a wedding or uh, some kind of holiday gathering and uh, someone says, oh, when are you getting married, settling down, uh, yada, yada. So that can, uh, so it can take on those kinds of forms and it can also become internalized uh, in, uh, on an occasion, depending on your perspective. Matrimania is kind of society's uh, over-the-top uh, obsession with weddings and marriage, and it comes out in uh, you know in reality shows like The Bachelor, uh, for example, uh, where uh, you know where everybody's competing uh, for uh, you know for that wedding ring, uh, so to speak. So, uh, so that's so uh, that's what matrimony is, and it was also coined by a DePaulo, by a DePaula rather. There's also another term that's a little more recent called amato normativity, which was uh, devised by a scholar named Elizabeth Brake in 2012. And uh, what that is, is uh, it's the belief that uh, there's one central amorous relationship that needs to take priority above others. So for example, uh, if you're, for example, if you're in a, uh, in a monogamous uh, romantic relationship or if you're uh, in marriage, there's that the belief that uh, you know your that uh, the needs of your spouse need to be co- need to be placed uh, above uh, all others, and uh, I will uh, I should probably have given a bit of a trigger warning <laughs> that uh, those of you who are uh, you know who are in the, those types of relationships uh, you know it could uh, it could affect it could be a trigger. So uh, I just uh, wanted to uh, give you that uh, give you that warning. So uh, I did want you to be uh, familiar with those terms and uh, the way this relates to living alone and uh, loving it is. Uh, that uh, it can be a good thing to be aware of these types of terms, that there is a name for that. And, uh, you know, and, and I don't know uh, if, uh, if that's the reason that uh, some of you, uh, you know, might be uh, feeling isolated, but uh, or and, and in the case of uh, Dr. Crownham or uh, you know one of your uh, one of your children might be feeling like that. Uh, those could be the re- could be reasons uh, at least underneath the surface as to why uh, why they might why y'all might be some of you might be feeling that way. So uh, so there's just uh, just a couple of uh, definitions of free as well. And there's also a more recent term, uh, the relationship escalator. Uh, it was uh, coined by uh, Amy Guerin, uh, who, what it, what it is, is essentially that a relationship uh, needs to follow a series of steps. First, you meet, then you date, then you become exclusive, then, you know, then you move in together, then you marry, have children, and it follows, kind of, it's supposed to follow a series of steps. And, uh, and that, that's what what's known as the escalator. And in recent years, uh, and if you've been, uh, I'll, I'm going to, I'll have a couple, I'll put a couple of articles uh, in for you uh, toward the end, but uh, there are uh, different uh, relationship styles that are uh, starting to, uh, starting to become a little bit more uh, visible as opposed to uh, a traditional uh, marriage path. And uh, again, the way, again, the reason I uh, talk about this in this presentation is so you could be aware of these kinds of terms that there are, uh, that there are all alternatives as far as that goes. Right. So what I'd like for us to do is uh, just a little, uh, a little sharing 
uh, about uh, myths and stereotypes about uh, being single as an adult. And let me just, uh, I'm gonna, let me go ahead and let me, let me do something really quickly with the, with the PowerPoint. Uh, so what I'd like for you to do is uh, just to take about the two minutes and I want you to just brainstorm. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer uh, as far as this goes. Okay, I don't know. Okay, for some reason the screen sharing. Okay, for some reason the screen sharing is not working. I don't know uh, why that uh, why that's the case, but uh, let me try it again. Okay, there we go. All right, so what I'd like for us to do, let's just take about two minutes just to brainstorm uh, about uh, just any stereotypes that you may, you may possess or you may have heard uh, about uh, just being single as an adult, uh, like in your, let's say if you're, if one is in their 20s, 30s or 40s, just brainstorm anything. There's no right or wrong answer as far as, uh, as far as that goes. And then we'll, uh, we'll take some time to, uh, to share. All right, and uh, don't worry about uh, any padlets or anything like that. But we'll uh, but we'll have an opportunity to uh, to share what we've got. All right? Can I uh, clarify anything or answer any questions before we proceed? So we'll type in the chat uh, a myth or a stereotype about being single. You know, just any stere any stereotypes, anything you may have heard, uh, or anything, even anything you might believe about uh, being single as an adult. Does that make does that make a little more sense? Yeah, I, I, so I'm just uh, to be clear, it's not like I believe that stereotype. Maybe that's what I'm going to put. So just to, right, okay. right, so right, just, exactly. <laughs> right, right, exactly. They don't have to be what you believe. Just maybe things you've heard. And. Uh, And I'm just typing these into the chat as, uh, as I see them. Confirmed old bachelor. I love that. <laughs> Go for it. about a minute so uh so yeah any uh any stereotypes uh, as far as that uh, as far as that goes yes and there yes and uh to follow up on uh dr uh on uh Crowdhammer, there is definitely some intersectionality uh, involved in this uh, in this conversation uh, as well. Uh, singleism, there is uh, some, there is a lot of sexism uh, as far as as far as that goes. And uh, Helene, if you'd like, uh, we'd love to hear just some of these terms that you uh, that you've got as well. <laughs> I don't want to say them. Okay. I mean, really? <laughs> no, no, seriously. That's, that's fine. These that's are, fine that's well. what's happened with the. I mean, I mean, this is a, a main a thing that happens in language in general. Uh, the terms for men are always much more positive, have been much more positive for men than they've been for women. And again, there you go. Thank you, Rosie. <laughs> and, you know, it start, that actually started out to be not such a bad word, but it, you know, now it has so many negative connotations. And, and that I think is a, I, you know, I just feel like the experience is different for men than it is for women. Right. Um, yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, and, uh, the, and language, and we'll talk about that uh, as well, uh, how language can, uh, how the language we use can contribute to this. And, uh, you know, I know you and I both study language. So, uh, so language can really be a uh, can be a tool as far as that goes. But, uh, but I love this list. Okay, so okay, cat lady. Okay, so uh, all right. So all so I am going to put that uh, on there. And uh, my cat is being very needy, so uh, I tend to play into the stereotype of the uh, cat male right there. So y'all can say hi to Chester if you're. Uh, my cat wants to make an appearance too. So let's see. All right, hang on, hang on. Let me uh, send on my. There's my cat, right? Okay. So she, what, all right. What's uh, what's your cat's name? My cat's name is Homer. And Hi, Homer. Yeah, she likes to make an appearance when I'm working. 
Right. Yeah, yeah, Chester. Yeah, so does Chester. My uh, my students are uh, pretty familiar uh, with him <laughs> at, uh, at this course. point. But uh, but yeah, we go into this into these different stereotypes about being single as an adult. And uh, pardon the typo here. But uh, but a lot of these uh, and uh, the reason I want us to uh, be able to uh, talk about these is so that way we can uh, we can see that uh, it that a lot of these languages a lot of these language can be uh, in internalized so uh so you know, unfortunately i have to stop the ch the shares uh, the sharing the screen in order to actually see the chat uh, but uh, but would anybody like to elaborate on uh, any of these terms on uh, why do you think uh, we might have some of these stereotypes so i see career oriented unhappy not social selfish mm -hmm lonely spirit of commitment so uh, so anybody why do you think uh, we might uh, that the society might have any of these stereotypes would anybody like to uh, yeah David? I can go I think um, what Helene was talking about is so true because I think in heteronormative sense uh, women were supposed to marry have that typical household take care of a family so whenever they don't do that um, for example I know in Korea uh, I have family in Korea, and I know that if they're focused more on their career instead of having a family, then people view that negatively. Uh, thankfully, that's changing with the younger generation, but I know that that can be um, an issue for for many. Right, yeah. and uh, yeah, and in a lot of and uh, in a lot of uh, my own recent research, and a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, you know the Asian uh, countries uh, in uh, in China and Korea and Japan, uh, it's becoming much more commonplace uh, to uh, to not go that route of uh, of having a family but uh, if we look at one of the things and as i'm looking at uh, all of this uh, material that uh, everyone put up on the screen uh, a lot of these uh, do come from our uh, societally defined uh, terms that uh, they come from they come from different uh, sources and uh, and i also wanted to uh wanted to give you a, a visual of the relationship escalator as well of uh, you know of what uh, of what society uh, tends to uh, tell us, and uh, and also uh, in looking at uh, a at our at language uh, to build on uh, what uh, what Helene was saying uh, earlier. This is just uh, an example uh, of some of the rhetoric, and uh, and if you're okay with it, I would love to copy and paste the uh, what y'all just posted in the chat and uh, use it uh, for a future presentation. But uh, something a phrase like "better half." The problem that I have, a problem I have with that phrase is, okay, so what uh, am I a half? Are you a half a person? Uh, what does that mean, uh, essentially? And uh, something like, I know a person uh, who would be perfect for you. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I am a person who lives alone, uh, giving that. Uh, given that I'm um, giving this uh, this topic, but uh, but I've had uh, that to happen uh, before. I'm not necessarily looking to be set up with someone, but uh, but somebody who comes to me and says, "Hey, I know somebody uh, who'd be uh, perfect for you." Okay, why did you assume that uh, that I'm looking, and uh, why would they be perfect for me other than the fact that uh, they're single and I'm single? What else uh, would do we have in common uh, as far as that uh, goes? And uh, why? And also, why aren't you married? Uh, you know that's also uh, that's also something uh, also a question that uh, some of us uh, do uh, do deal with and uh, going into the uh, intersectionality involving gender uh, the old maid uh, as far as that goes I also have an issue with the phrase still single as if that's a problem to be fixed and uh, the reason that I that I want to bring in this language into a presentation about uh, living alone is to be aware of the problems that that uh, that are inherent in such in the in these kinds of phrases that uh, these make uh, assumptions about uh, you know about uh, the right way to live uh, as far as as far as that goes and I see somebody's in the uh, chat okay and Susie so you're going uh, okay so it sounds like uh, you uh, like you have that like you're facing that issue uh, as far as that uh, as far as that goes so uh, so yes yeah, so uh, so using the phrase still single and uh, th and also using the word family when you mean people and uh, this is uh, something uh, this is where po what politicians and business use that uh, we're uh, trying to help American families and uh, there's the working families party the pro the problem that I have with that language is that uh, I think when they say family they assume that 
that uh, everybody is part of a nuclear family unit when uh, when that's just not true as uh, you know as David was uh, just bringing up uh, right now so uh, so ag so again I think it's a very good uh, a good thing to be aware of this of how language tends to affect the way we think as far as far as that goes and additionally uh, i'm also uh, very big into popular culture uh, analyzing popular culture and uh, i don't know how many of you are anybody does anybody know where this uh, comes from anybody know what movie this uh, image on the left comes from Okay. All right. So yeah. So the uh, the old classic uh, "Say Anything." We've got uh, that uh, image uh, of uh, John Cusack uh, holding up uh, his boombox uh, to uh, for the to uh, you know try to get to the woman uh, that uh, that he's involved with. So uh, you know. So and uh, movies tend to reinforce that message that. Uh, you know, that uh, we need to follow that uh, relationship uh, escalator. And uh, this is an area of study of mine. I don't want to go too much uh, into that, but, uh, but you could prop, but I'm sure, and I'm sure you could easily think of uh, a movie where, uh, you know, where at the beginning, the protagonist is broken in some way and a, somehow a romantic relationship is going to fix that, uh, fix the person's problem. And even in non-romantic, uh, movies a lot of times there's uh, a romantic subplot uh, where uh, the hero or the heroine uh, somehow needs to couple up in addition to uh, accomplishing their goal we also it also comes from from romance novels uh, from books and uh, even in the songs that uh, in some of the songs that we listen to uh, as well, so and and certainly, and if you're a fan, and if you're a fan of these, I certainly don't want to ruin your enjoyment uh, of uh, these types of things. But I think, but I think it's a very good thing to be, uh, you know, to be aware, to be critical of those messages and how they could influence us uh, on some type of uh, on some type of level. All right. So with the, at this, uh, I'm going to pause for any uh, for any questions. Does anybody have any questions or any comments? And uh, I somehow was able to get the chat up. Uh, while uh, while screen sharing, so uh, does anybody have any questions or anything you want to add as far as comments are concerned? Okay, all right. So, uh, and if any come up, just uh, please do feel free to uh, to use the chat. But uh, I do want to uh, give a uh, another uh, exercise. So uh, this is a think. This is a thinking exercise. So and okay. So how do we help students combat stereotypes? Okay. All right. Is that a quest? All right. And is that a question for me? Is that uh, is that something uh, for uh, for discussing? Okay. So how do we help students combat stereotypes? So all right. So I'm gonna. So before I I could answer that, but uh, but uh, before I do, I'd like to see if uh, if anybody else has any ideas before I uh, before I get into it. I want to give the floor. I to, uh, I, I I can. Uh get in this um I, I for myself i tell my kids i don't have kids but i have my stepdaughter who shared my life uh as i uh, as i stated in the beginning uh, i tell them uh, when they ask how we know the stereotype from facts i said just question it uh see why uh, why we say that and research so we cannot just uh, learn from uh dinner table and collective memory, we have to question and criticize what have been told to us. That's what I, how I approach it. Okay, so okay, so questioning what we've been taught, uh, as far as it goes, and that's what, uh, and that's why, uh, you know, why we're, why our students are here to, uh, you know, to learn, uh, to develop their critical thinking skills, as far as it goes. So, okay, so Dave, David, introduce more diverse texts of films. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? What do you mean? Uh, and uh, do you have any ideas for, uh, for potential texts or films that uh, that can help students combat such uh, such stereotypes. Yeah, I think that uh, you know when I've taught before, I've taught K through twelve, uh, introducing very diverse texts or texts that go against the norm um, that are just not heteronormative. So I think when they have these diverse points of view, they're able to really combat those stereotypes that they built up. 
Okay, so being able to uh, being exposed to texts that uh, that have um, alternate alternative messages to mm -hmm. uh, you know, to uh, you know to the essentialist uh, point of view. Okay, so those so those are ways that uh, that we can do that. And uh, one thing that I do is uh, I've uh, is uh, this semester I'm actually uh, theming my uh, IGED one ten classes uh, around social justice. I teach in the interdisciplinary general education program, and uh, I actually include the uh, single studies as part of a social uh, as part of social justice students are currently reading uh, john thompson's uh, i came as a sh as a shadow uh, so they can learn uh, a little bit more about uh, white supremacy and about the uh, racism but they're also learning about different types of marginalization uh, as well, uh, as far as that goes, they're learning about uh, about ageism, uh, sexism, uh, ableism, and uh, they're also uh, they're also reading uh, material about singleism. Uh, a couple of articles from uh, from Bella DePaulo. And if anybody's interested in uh, in this at all, uh, I'll uh, put my email up at the end of the uh, at the end of the presentation, and I'll be happy to share uh, any resources with you. And uh, I also wrote also uh, the book that uh, David mentioned that I wrote, How to Be a Happy bachelor students are reading uh, part of mine as well where I actually uh, just actually uh, teach students specifically about what uh, singleism matrimonia and amount of normativity uh, are and uh, they, they learn examples and uh, they also uh, learn about uh, ways that uh, that they can combat that and I'm certainly not advocating that student that uh, all students stay single if that's uh, you know if students uh, you know do want to uh, want to marry or uh, get into a monogamy Monogamous uh, partnership. That's certainly uh, that's certainly fine. Uh, there's I'm certainly not anti uh, marriage or anti relationship, but uh, but I do essentially want students to be aware of you know aware of that of um, you know of these types of of this type of thinking that uh, and so in that way they don't necessarily need to enter a relationship just because uh, that's what uh, society appears to be saying that uh, that they can explore alternatives if they're uh, if they're inclined to uh, to do so okay so okay and uh, all right so yeah so little fi okay little fires everywhere is that a is that a tv show is that a uh, is that a movie is that a book Okay, both looking show. Okay, so all right, so uh, I will definitely, uh, definitely bookmark uh, this uh, as well. All right, so are there any other uh, other questions or comments? So, uh, so some great discussion uh, we've got uh, we've got happening. Are there any other questions or comments? Thank you, Doctor Doctor Win. Uh, this is um, Jack Huang. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, I just want to share also one thing that, especially during the pandemic, I think. Uh, many single people, um, it could be really difficult for them, but at the same time at work, sometimes people worry too much about people who are single. And as a single person, uh, that became sort of pressure at work because I don't want to necessarily talk about that at work. Right. I know many people are concerned, but those kind of things actually make things a little bit more difficult even. So I think those kind of things to, you know, at work, how to deal with that kind of conversation with colleagues and you know, respecting each other that would be really helpful. There's something I learned more during pandemic. Okay, so do you so do you find that kind of thing like a little patronizing, if that's uh, if that's the right word? A little bit. Okay, yeah, and uh, and that can be uh, that can be if we're uh, start if we're suddenly hearing if we're hearing uh, all of those uh, all of those particular messages and uh, and at the end of the uh, presentation, I'm going to give you uh, some re some additional resources that uh, that you can use to uh, to kind of help to uh, to uh, to sort of manage uh, those feelings that uh, might come up and uh, there's even uh, there's even some comebacks that uh, that you can use as far as that uh, as far as that goes and uh, and uh, and uh, presser needs some recent uh, presser needs some recent animated movies have had strong female leads without romantic relationships examples are brave and moana and yeah and there's a lot of and there are a lot of uh, movies and books out there that uh, are very pro single and uh, I don't uh, and uh, I don't want this to be too much of a plug for my book I certainly don't want to come across that way, but I actually do have a chapter on uh, pro single artifacts, uh, books, TV shows, shows, uh, songs, movies that 
that uh, are very much uh, pro-single and uh, have essentially protagonists uh, who don't feel the need to have relationships. And uh, okay, yeah, and Dr. Brown, a lot of talk at work with colleagues is centered on uh, family and uh, dating. And yeah, and uh, hearing a lot of that talk can, uh, you know, can be a trigger uh, in a lot of those, uh, in a lot of those ways. And uh, yeah, and again, uh, I'm going to give you some some resources as well uh, that can uh, that can get you started. Uh, on uh, you know on just uh, learning how to kind of deal with the, with these how to work with these issues as well. All right, all right. Are there any other other questions or comments at all? Okay, so what I'd like for us to do is I'd like for us to do a little brainstorming exercise. And again, you can feel free to put it in the uh, in the chat. So, uh, so what I'd like for you to do is to just kind of brainstorm, think about uh, things you enjoy and just uh, things that you, you know, things that make you, you. And uh, just what can I do to enjoy singlehood and challenge some of these stereotypes that uh, you might hear either explicitly or implicitly uh, like we discussed and again there's no uh, there's no wrong answer uh, as far as that goes but just something that you could see yourself doing to uh, just to either continue enjoying singlehood if that if you are or to try to enjoy it uh, a little more and maybe challenge some of these uh, some of these stereotypes that uh, that you might be facing all right does it, do you need me to repeat or clarify anything about this before we proceed All right, all right. So, and, uh, feel free to to place it in the chat if you are if you're so inclined, and uh, we'll go ahead and start. Just typing them in the chat as I see them. And I'm just going to bold LinkedIn Learning. That seems to be a pretty, uh, a very popular, uh, very popular choice. Let's travel. Okay. All right. So uh, some pretty. Uh, okay. Some. Okay. Some music playing in a uh, playing in a band. 
learning how to cook. And uh, that's actually uh, not to get, and uh, I generally don't talk a lot about myself in these uh, presentations, but, uh, but that's something that I uh, practiced doing uh, last year in the pandemic, uh, experimented with some recipes that, uh, that, I'd never, uh, that I'd never tried before. Adopting pet. So we've got exercising. Yes, that's a right, right. be vegan. Okay, okay, vegan. Okay, all right. So we've got a nice uh, variety of different things that uh, it sound. It seems that uh, that we're all doing where we could do to uh, to to enjoy singlehood and challenge stereotypes. So, so a lot of good uh, practical things. And uh, I, I also, I, I do want to pay particular uh, credence to developing uh, thick skin, don't care about uh, others' thoughts. And, uh, and yeah, that's, uh, that can be, that, uh, that is definitely a process that, uh, that can be, uh, you know, that, that can be a good thing. It can be uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit challenging. And that's why I want to uh, share with you a couple of uh, resources. And, uh, you know, I became interested in, single studies uh, back in 2015 after a relationship that I was in uh, ended. And, uh, you know, and I felt uh, just really depressed about it, thinking I'm going to be alone forever. And uh, I think I Googled being single as an adult and I landed on uh, this website, uh, belladepaulo.com. And I'm just going to stop uh, I just, I'm just going to stop sharing the PowerPoint. I'm going to share my uh, screen. And uh, essentially, this is the person uh, who's kind of pioneered single studies and uh, has inspired uh, a lot of my own, uh, my own work on, uh, on single studies. And uh, she's got a wonderful TED Talk. And uh, she wrote this book, uh, Singled Out. Uh, which uh, is essentially uh, the canonical text uh, in as relates to singlehood and a lot of a lot of articles uh, some of them are dated but some of them are a lot more recent and uh, some pretty uh, some pretty good stuff about uh, being single in the pandemic so uh, I found that uh, that I, I found that uh, getting into her work really helped me to uh, you know to develop a thicker skin and to uh, kind of come up with some of my own uh, arguments uh, as well. So, uh, you know, and when I found her site, I went down a, a nice rabbit hole uh, for a few hours and I found myself, it was during the summer, uh, you know, I wasn't teaching. So I found myself just really uh, immersing myself in her work. And uh, I started a blog about it. And I'll give you the link to my to my own website about it if you're interested, not at, uh, at the risk of uh, sounding like I'm uh, self-promoting uh, here. But uh, I started a blog on it and eventually that led to writing uh, some academic articles and and the book uh, how to be a happy bachelor as far as that goes so i was able to take uh, these personal uh, this personal issues and and i was able to turn it into into work into uh, you know into into product into productivity. So yes, I have some recommendations as well. I'm going to type in uh, his name's Peter McGraw. He has uh, a podcast called Solo, and uh, it's essentially about living your best a single life. And uh, a friend of mine actually started. I don't know if he's been. Uh, I don't know if he's actually been recording lately, but. Uh, his name is Craig Jeffries, and let me see if I can find his. Okay, I'll tell you what. If you want to uh, send me your email, I can uh, I can find uh, I can find that uh, for you, and I can send it to you. Uh, off list. He's on a Facebook group that I'm uh, a part of, but, uh, but he, uh, he creates, uh, he has his own channel uh, about, uh, about singlehood, but, uh, but I would definitely, uh, if this interests you, I would definitely start with, uh, with Bella DePaulo's work. Uh, she has uh, some great material, and if you're on Facebook, uh, I'm also going to uh, type in the name of a group that uh, that I'm a part of called the, the uh, Community of Single People. Uh, we call ourselves Coast or uh, Coaspers, and uh, you know, and if you uh, if you get on if you uh, if you request uh, to get on there, make sure you answer the questions. Uh, our group actually does talk about. Uh, about these kinds of issues, but uh, you know, but uh, I like to think of this presentation as kind of the uh, foundation of you know of living uh, of living a good solo life if that's the uh, if that's the uh, path that you're uh, that you're going on uh, either by choice or by circumstance. 
parents and uh, and, it can, and it can be hard in a uh, in a world that uh, that uh, despite uh, population changes still does tend to uh, value uh, marriage and uh, the marriage path uh, so uh, there are some uh, great resources for you and uh, I'll also I'm also going to put again put my email into the chat as well I'll be happy to share this uh, this presentation with you and uh, and I can share a lot of other resources uh, as far as far as that goes but uh, but some great strategies and uh, some great discussion so all right so I know we still have uh, we still have about seven minutes remaining in the presentation I'd like to open it up for any uh, any additional questions or, uh, or comments I have a question uh, Craig and I'm, I'm really wondering about it. You know, I studied about collective society and individualistic society, and I came from Egypt. It's very collective, and we love to live in um, in big uh, families. And uh, I was struck by uh, how, and I all, I've been living in the U.S. for the past seventeen years, and my perspective. Everybody really um, value individualism, and um, and because of that. I found it throughout the pandemic that living alone was something that everybody was concerned about. Is this kind of criticize our individualistic as American or as a Western society? I just want to make sure I understand your question. So you're thinking the concern around living alone could be a criticism of, uh, of kind of, of the individualism of America? Of, um, yeah, because if for individual society, it's okay to be alone. It's, a it's okay to be independent. Uh, and I can live alone and I'm, I'm free to do whatever I want. You know, in, in a collective society like us, it could be really, uh, really bad. And it's really something that it could be highlighted. So for me, throughout that pandemic, when these issues kind of surf, uh, came uh, to the surface, which is, this is the first time for me to hear about it here in America for the past 18 years. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. And I never thought about it. Uh, I never thought about it like that. Cause yeah, I know. Cause yeah, I mean, and, you know, in a lot of, uh, you know, like in, in Egypt and in a lot of uh, other, uh, other countries in the East, uh, there are more, more collective societies. Uh, I think you could look at it that way. And this, I'm just, this is just my own uh, opinion. I think you could look at it like that, but I think though, even in, uh, even in America, you know, marriage is, uh, marriage is very much still, uh, still privileged, maybe not as much so as, uh, you know, as in, uh, as in Egypt or uh, as in, uh, as in other, uh, you know, as in other countries in the East, but, uh, you know, but I, I still do think that, uh, that that could be a, uh, could be a criticism of, uh, you know, of just uh, individualism, maybe, maybe period, uh, maybe not necessarily having to do with, uh, you know, with Western culture or Eastern culture, but, uh, but that's just my own thought uh, as far as that, as far as that goes, but it's definitely a good question to be, uh, to be thinking about, because I know that, that, um, you know, different, uh, different cultures have different perspectives uh, as far as that, uh, as far as that goes. Thank you. Great. So okay, see so a couple of other questions, Doctor Br Doctor Brown and Susie. What are some healthy ways, Doctor Brown? What are some healthy ways to relieve stress? And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that to uh, put that to the group. Uh, what uh, what what do you think uh, there are some healthy ways to uh, relieve stress? Are I believe sauna, uh, having sauna sessions uh, with light music really help uh, relieve the stress. Um, uh, that worked for me and exercise. Okay, and I, and I know exercise is a uh, very big tool in uh, my life, because I like music. Do you meditate to, to, uh, to that music, uh, Fatma? Well, I try not to use my computer or anything, just like kind of, it's kind of meditate because I, I stare to the ceiling, really not doing anything. Right, right. Okay. Okay. So that, those are, could be uh, some ways of uh, relieving stress. And uh, okay. And I think in the uh, Susie has a uh, question, what are the advantages of being single and uh, a fair, a fair question. So uh, I could probably uh, go into that, but uh, I'll let uh, our uh, fellow uh, singletons uh, take the, uh, try to try to answer this, try to give their own perspectives. What do you think some of the advantages might be of being single? Okay. You can go anywhere you want. So uh, I was going to say you should ask a married person with a lot of children. 
Thank okay. you, Tilly. All right, Dr. Crowdhammer, do you want to uh, <laughs> what's out with that? No, but I, I just want to get back to Fatma's point about um, our society as being an individualistic society as opposed to a, a you know, communal society. But you know, really, when you think about it, people living single is, is a very recent development. I think you know, uh, single people often used to live with their families or relatives, um, you know, just economically speaking, I think it used to be, uh, you know, this is, this is a whole new thing. I, I don't know that much about it, but I think that's a very interesting way to, to, to look at this whole issue because I think it's very recent in uh, human society. But I, I do have to go now because as I said, I'm trying to get to the next one. I'm gonna to try to do that from school. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wynn and everybody for a very stimulating discussion. Thank, thank you. Uh, but I do have to leave. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you, Helene. Okay, and, uh, take care, thanks and, uh, so much, bye-bye. Just, I know we only have a, have a couple minutes left and I certainly wanna be respectful of everybody's uh, time, but I did drop a link uh, into the uh, chat. This is uh, an opinion and op-ed piece from uh, yesterday's New York Times about uh, about the decline of uh, marriage in America. And it's not, uh, it's not one of those pieces that uh, says, oh, the family is declining and uh, laments it, but it actually gives a pretty, uh, a pretty objective take about how the world is changing. So one of the things that uh, I find uh, does help me if I start getting into that uh, whole uh, place of internalized singleism is to uh, is to look at uh, hey you know this is part of uh, this is part of uh, art of societal change this is part of uh, part of progress that's uh, happening and uh, you know at, at least where I'm at in the moment right now you know I'm part of uh, of this particular uh, of this particular change and uh, it is and it's predicted to continue to go in this direction so if you get a chance it's a really good uh, it's a really good read and uh, you you know, and my hope is uh, when I uh, when I was talking, I originally uh, brought this up with uh, with Carl Moore, uh, and uh, we talked about uh, this possibly being uh, the not just a present a one and done presentation, but a possible uh, a possible start to uh, to something to uh, maybe a series of uh, discussions. So uh, so my hope is that uh, this presentation. It, uh, you know, it won't end here. That uh, you know, that you'll be able to uh, kind of take some of these resources and uh, and use them uh, as for, to your advantage. And uh, and again, I'll type my email in the chat again. Uh, I am always always happy to talk about anything related to singlehood. Uh, so uh, please, uh, you know, so please don't be shy about uh, about getting in touch with me. I'm uh, I'm always happy to uh, to talk about these, particularly among uh, among people uh, you know who, uh, who who I work with in our fashion so all right so uh so i guess it's 1 30 i can stay on if y'all if any of you i can stay on for a few minutes i do have a class at two but i can stay on for a few minutes if any of you uh have any other questions for me uh, but uh you know if, the, if anybody needs to log off uh please don't let me keep you but uh, thank you all for uh, for being here uh, today i think this was uh, this was wonderful and thank you uh, dr serna and uh and uh, dr uh, and uh, dr Falcon. oh i'm fatma don't worry and no fat, and, uh, Julian for uh, for allowing uh, for allowing the space and i uh, hope to, and i hope to hear from uh, from some of you i don't uh, i don't think i've met too many of you in person yet but uh, but I would love to, uh, at some point, if anybody wants to uh, grab a coffee or something, um, I live right near campus, so uh, I know there's a Starbucks, so uh, feel free to get in touch. I just yeah. want to say thank you. Okay. That was really informative, very, uh, 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 very, very nice discussion, and it made us really think deeply about the issue, not really to, to touch on the surface of it, so really appreciating having you. Thank, thank you so much, Fatma. And again, I'm hoping that this uh, that this functions as a springboard for uh, you know for more thinking and uh, more conversation about uh, about it. So uh, so thank you, thank you, Fatma. Thank you for your uh, for all your con thank you for your contributions. Thank you everybody for uh, you know for your contributions. And uh, you know you made you all made this presentation. So thank you. Yeah, Dr. Wynn, I just wanted to thank you because I know a lot of our workshops are academic focused. So I'm so glad we had this self care workshop. Uh, it's just something that we need to have a balance with, with our work, but also our personal mental health. So I do appreciate you being here. And for everyone else that was on the call today, thank you so much for your great discussions and questions. Um, I thought that was just really livened up the conversation. All right. Thank, thank yeah. you. Thank you. And thank you, David. Uh, this mm -hmm. is great. Really enjoyed it. Yeah.
Well, thank you, Dr. Wynn. So for everyone here and for everyone's listening, um, we will share these resources. I'll, I will also upload this to our YouTube channel um, for others to watch as well. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.